स्पीकिंग के लिए डियर व्यूवर्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लॉ फॉर सेमेस्टर वन टूडे वी आर कंडक्टिंग द रिविजन लेक्चर्स एंड द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ दीज लेक्चर्स बिगिनस टूडे फॉर द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ आर स्टूडेंट्स सो वी आर बिगनिंग विद द पेपर दैट इज़ द फाउंडेशन पेपर law and social transformation so many times i have a doubt in my mind that is whether law transforms the society or the society is transformed by the legislations so there is a dual application or it is vice versa so we have seen that there have been legislations which have been made which have been enacted for bringing transformation and simultaneously we also have been seen there are certain situations in the societies where it becomes the need there is to be the law so either you may call it for reformation you may call the law which is there for the purpose of regulation or it can be for emancipation so this paper of law and social transformation i believe it always evolves law is always evolving it changes according to the situations it changes according to the needs to the requirements of the society and the topic which i have to taken today for educating you it is the status of women not exactly the status of women but women and law why women and law the question should arise in your mind or why do we have this topic in the paper of law and social transformation we give important significant importance to women and their interest to be protected for this we have to understand the status of women which is there in our country the reforms which have come and the role of women in the society so this paper when we teach we don't teach only from the legal perspective but we also have to take into account the social status of women the upliftment or the movements which have come where the gender disparity has to be removed has to be taken out and there have been people who have brought these reforms who have evolved the laws over the centuries so if we look into the ancient era and the status of women in india there have been number of changes over the period of time which is recorded in indian history the society where we were living it was indo aryan society and indo aryan speaking regions and we see that there is subordination of women but we also see in the gurukul system over there that women were equal as their counterpart that means in the gurukul they were also exercising certain freedoms and they were taking care of the gurukul and they were also learning the vedas but did they inherit any rights or was there the notion of right which was prevalent which was being given to the women at that particular time but globally if we are looking into we see that women were being treated as chattel not only in indian history but even in the western history of that particular era and the role of women was very very limited that is it is reproduction taking care of family taking care of their cattle and agriculture now we have various eras which have come into our country we have the indo aryan region era we have the mughal era and because of the significant attack which were happening on this continent and the fear of mughals picking up their women the parda system came into existence and then the status of women started deteriorating 
that is women they have to be married within their communities or infanticide was being practiced in major communities so that the question of marriage does not arise the status had to be looked into account and the training which was being given to women was very very limited the education was very very limited they could not move out from their family the barriers had been drawn because their uh, pro- they had to be protected they were vulnerable and during british india we see it is the east india company which is ruling and there are various measures which have been taken over to emancipate the status of women so with the assistance of raja ram mohan roy swami vivekanand or ram krishna parmahans you have the bengal sati regulation act 1829 hindu widows remarriage act 1856 female infanticide prevention act of 1870 and the age of the uh, age of consent act of women 1891 now today we see there are certain rights which are conferred on the women under the indian constitution now these rights basically include the right of equality dignity freedom from discrimination and we have various statutes which are governing and protecting the right of women no wonder we already had the president of india the prime minister the speaker in the lok sabha and number of women who have faced multiple difficulties but yet have received the significant positions there are issues, uh, there are issues there are difficulties the rate of malnutrition if we look into it is very high among the young adolescent girls pregnant and lactating women in india there are repercussions with women and their children's health and women health specifically violence against women which we see which is rapid and uh, especially sexual violence if we look into against the women which which uh, tries to dominate and tries to uh, dictate the women but during the british raj there have been many reformers it is raja ram mohan roy ishwar chandra vidyasagar mahatma jyoti rao phule who fought for the betterment of women and uh, piyari charan sarkar a former student of hindu college calcutta and a young member of bengal he started the first free school for girls in 1847 in barsat that is the sub urban city of calcutta later the school is named as kali krishna girls high school there have been missionaries who also assisted in the emancipation of women and educated educating indian women so these are the ladies known as martha malt nee meet and her daughter elisa kedwell nimold and they pioneered the education and training of girls in south india with the assistance of general william bentick in 1829 the widow remarriage act was enacted many women reformers have come to the cause of women it is pandita ramabai there have been women who have fought against the british it is the queen kittur chenamma of the princely state of kittur in karnataka who led a rebel against the british army in response to the doctrine of laps it is rani lakshmi bai the queen of jhansi led the indian rebellion of 1857 against the british they are considered as national heroes then the begums that is begum hazrat mahal the co ruler of abad she refused dealing with the british and female rulers during that period the begums of bhopal are also considered notable female rulers during this period and these ladies they were trained in martial arts anandi gopal joshi and chandramukhi basu and kadambini gangule are some of the earliest women to receive degrees 
now the delegation of first women's delegation met secretary of state in 1917 being supported by the indian national congress the all india women's education conference it was held in pune in 1927 it became a major organization and a pioneer in the movement for social changes in 1929 the child marriage restraint act was passed stipulating 14 as the minimum age of marriage for the girl and uh, women in india we see today they participate in number of areas that is education sport politics media culture various service sectors science technology mrs indira gandhi she became the first indian female prime minister and served for a very long duration that is the duration of 15 years constitution of india guarantees to all women equality article 14 no discrimination by state article 15 1 equality of opportunity article 16 again in article 16 we say that we see there is positive discrimination that is the state can make more number of legislations for improving the status of women children and uh, uh, minorities and the backward classes now this is done because equality can be brought only within the equals not within the unequals so for that positive discrimination becomes a necessity a need then there are provisions which favor the interest of women and children it is article 153 and uh, also there has to be certain practices which have which are derogatory to the dignity of women have to be uh, renounced and there are provisions to be made by the state for securing just humane condition of work and maternity relief for women that is article 2 that is the a directive principle in the state policy we have also seen the movements which came up and feminist activism in india in the 1970s and over here we see the women groups came together and uh, basically it was the mathura rape case and the acquittal of policemen accused of raping a young girl mathura in the police station it led to country wide protest in 1979 and 1980 these protests they were covered by national media and it forced the government to amend the evidence act the criminal procedure code the indian penal code and it created a new offense that is custodial rape now female activists they have also come together united over number of issues that is female infanticide gender bias women health women safety and women literacy alcoholism is a serious problem which is existing in many of the states in india that is state of andhra pradesh himachal pradesh haryana odisha and madhya pradesh many women groups came forward and they launched anti liquor campaign many indian muslim women have questioned the fundamental leaders interpretation of women's right under the sharia act and have criticized the talaq system now a uh, mary roy mother of arundhati roy she won a lawsuit in 1986 against the inherit inheritance legislation of her keralit syrian christian community in the supreme court so the judgment ensured equal rights for syrian christian women with their male siblings in regard to their ancestral property until then her syrian Christian community followed the provisions of the Travancore Succession Act of 1916 and the Cochin Succession Act of 1921 while elsewhere in India the same community followed the Indian Succession Act of 1925 in 1990s grant from foreign 
donor agencies enable the formation of new women oriented ngos self help group and ngos such as self employed women's association seva it played significant role in advancement of women's right in ma'am india now women activists we have ms medha patkar for the narmala narmada bachao andolan 1991 we have seen the kerala high court restricted the entry of women above the age of 10 and below the age of 50 from sabri mala shrine as they were of the menstruating age however on 28 december 2018 the supreme court of india lifted the ban on entry of women it said that discrimination against women on any grounds even religious it is unconstitutional the government of india declared 2001 as the year of women empowerment swashakti the national policy for the empowerment of women it is passed in 2001 in 2006 it is the case of imrana which came to light lime light a muslim rape, rape victim was highlighted by the media imrana was raped by her father in law and the pronouncement of some muslim clerics that imrana should marry her father in law led to widespread protest and finally imrana's father in law was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment the verdict was welcomed by number of women group and all india muslim personal law board now in 2011 poll is conducted by thomas reuters foundation india was the fourth and most dangerous country in the world for women india was also noted as the worst country for women in g20 countries on 9th march 2010 one day after international women day rajya sabha passed the women's reservation bill requiring that 33% of the seats in indian parliament and state legislative bodies should be reserved for women in october 2017 another poll was published by thomas reuter foundation which was which found that delhi was the fourth most dangerous mega city in the world for women and it was also worst mega city in the world for women when it came to sexual violence risk of rape and harassment so sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act of 2013 is a legislative act in india that seeks to protect women from sexual harassment at their workplace and the act is implemented from 9 december 2013 the criminal law amendment act of 2013 it has introduced changes to the indian penal code making sexual harassment an expressed offense under section 354a which is punishable up to 3 years of imprisonment and or with fine the amendment also introduced new sections making act like disrobing a woman without consent stalking and sexual act by person in authority and offense it also made acid attacks a specific offense with punishment of imprisonment not less than 10 years which could extend to life imprisonment and with fine now in 2014 indian family court in mumbai ruled that a husband objecting to his wife wearing a kurta and jeans and forcing her to wear a sari amounts to cruelty inflicted by the husband and it can be a ground to seek divorce the wife was granted divorce on the grounds of cruelty which is defined under section 27 1d of the special marriage act in on 22nd august 2017 the indian supreme court deemed instant triple talaq unconstitutional now 2018 again there is a survey which is conducted by thomas reuter foundation and it termed india as world's most dangerous country for women are at risk of sexual violence though the national commission for women they rejected this report and say because they said that the sample size which has been surveyed is very very less and uh, 
It cannot reflect the state of affairs in the country of 1.3 billion people. But nevertheless, the truth is that, yes, violence against women in India, it is grave in nature. National Commission for Women also point that there could be no doubt in India is far ahead of number of countries uh, for uh, protecting the interest of women. The survey was similarly rejected by the Center for Study of Developing Societies, saying it is biased. In 2018, the Supreme Court of India has struck down a law making it a crime for a man to have sex with a married woman without the permission of her husband. Prior to November 2018, women were for forbidden to climb Agatsya Varkudam. A court ruling removed this prohibition. Now, Rukma Bai, she is the second practicing female physician in India. The publicity around her child marriage was very, very much publicized during that era where this child was forced into child marriage but she refused to enter into marriage and subsequently her matter went to the Privy Council and it was dissolution of marriage and because of her resistance it led to the principle or to the law that is the age of, cons age of consent act of 1981. Now, Sarla Thakral, she has become the first Indian woman to fly an aircraft in 1936. Great developments, 1848, Savitri Bai Phule, along with her husband Jyoti Rao Phule, opened a school for girls in Pune, in India. Savitri Bai Phule became the first woman teacher in India. And lots of regards and blessings to this lady because of which today many women are being educated and uh, we really bow to her efforts and we uh, uh, really praise her and for her efforts and her endurance uh, today the Pune University it is named in her uh, uh, favoring her respect or giving her respect as Savitri Bai Phule Pune Vidyapit. Then the Beetham School has been established by John Elliott and later it became the Beetham College, first in India, pioneering the cause of women's education. And uh, Sister Nivedita Girls School had been organized during that period. Uh, uh, there are many women and the first women university that is SNDT Women's University it was founded on 2nd June 1916 by the social reformer Dhondu Keshav Karve with just 5 students 1917 Annie Besant she became the first female president of Indian National Congress and for her distinguished social services, Pandita Ramabai became the first Indian woman to be awarded the Kaisare Hind Medal by British Raj. And there is a list of women who have attained, uh, who have really succeeded and uh, assisted the nation to grow, to develop. So you all can read that. But uh, we continue further. It is post-independence. Rukmini Devi Arundale, she is the first ever woman in Indian history to be nominated a Rajya Sabha member. Considered to be very important. Her role that is revitalist in Indian classical dance, <coughs> especially the dance form of Bharat Natyam, from the original Sadir style, to the prevalent as amongst the temple dancers or the Devdasis. She also worked for the re-establishment of Indian art and craft. Uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, she became the first women prime minister in 1966. 1972, Kiran Bedi became the first female recruit to join Indian police service. Then 1989, Justice M. Fatima Bibi became the first women judge of the Supreme Court of India. And uh, 
इट इज मिताली मधुमिता मेड हिस्ट्री बाय बिकमिंग द फर्स्ट वुमन ऑफिसर टू अर्न अ सेवा मेडल फॉर गैलेंट्री नाउ द लिस्ट कंटिन्यूज बट वी विल मूव ऑन विद द अदर इशूज विच वी हैव टू डिस्कस नाउ स्टेटस ऑफ वेमेन इन इंडिया इट इज स्ट्रांगली कनेक्टेड विद फैमिली रिलेशन इन इंडिया फैमिली इज क्रोशियली इम्पॉर्टेंट द यूनिट इज पेट्रीलिनियल एंड इन सम प्लेसेज वी सी देर इज मेट्रीलिनियल सिस्टम ऑल्सो एग्जिस्टिंग फैमिलीज आर यूजली मल्टी मल्टी जनरेशनल विद द ब्राइड मूविंग टू लिव इन विद द इन लॉज एंड देर इज अरारकियल सिस्टम एंड एल्डर्स हैविंग द अथॉरिटी ओवर द यंगर चिल्ड्रन इन द फैमिली द वास्ट मेजोरिटी ऑफ मैरिजेस आर मोनोगोमस बट अर्ली पॉलीगेमी एंड पॉलीड्री डिड एग्जिस्ट इन इंडिया बट टूडे इट इज बैन वेडिंग्स इन इंडिया आर वेरी लैविश मोस्टली दे आर अरेंज बट टूडे वी सी देर आर लव मैरिजेस ऑल्सो and uh, indian armed forces if we look into they began recruiting women to non medical position in 1992 indian army began inducting women officers in 1992 the border security force began recruiting female officers in 2013 and 2017 tarushri parekh tanushri parekh became the first women combat officer commissioned by the bsf Indian government announced that women could serve fire, uh, fighter pilots in the air force on 24th October 2015 earlier they were only permitted to fly transport aircraft and helicopter the decision means that women are now eligible for induction in any role in the Indian air force then in 2014 women made up 3% of indian army personnel 2.8% of navy personnel and 8.5% of uh, air force personnel as of 2017 women accounted 5% of active and reserve indian armed forces personnel in 1972 kiran bedi became the first lady indian police officer and was the only women in the batch of 80 ips officers <coughs> she joined the agmt mut cadet in 1992 asha sinha a 1982 batch ips officer became the first woman commandant in paramilitary forces of india when she was posted as posted as commandant Central Industrial Security Forces in Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders. Then, uh, Kanchan Chaudhary Bhatta Charya. She became the Lady IPS Officer in India, belonging to 1973 batch, becoming the first Lady Directorate General of Police of State in India, where she was appointed as a DGP of Uttarakhand Police. and archana ramasundran of 1980 batch became the first woman to be director general of police now uh, in feb 17 2020 the supreme court of india said that women officers in indian army can get command position as par with the male officers this is decided in babita punia case the court also stated that the government's argument against it were discriminatory disturbing based stereotype the court also stated that permanent commission to all women officers <coughs> should be granted should be made regardless of their year of service the government had earlier said that women commanders would not be acceptable to some troops now let us move towards education in india 1992-93 figures shows 9.2% of household in india were headed by women however 3.5% of households they are the below poverty line and were not and were found to be headed by women so women attained an adult literacy class in tirupkudzi in tamil nadu state the overall female literacy in the state in 2011 it is 
and in the previous decades it has been increased by 96% by 9% uh, though there is increase in female literacy however very few girls than boys have been enrolled in school many girls are drop out but in urban india girls are nearly on par with boys in terms of education in rural india they receive less education than boys uh, in the national sample survey data of 1997 the states of kerala and mizoram have approached universal female literacy under the non formal education scheme that is nfe only 40% of nfe centers in state and 10% centers in the union territories are exclusively reserved for women as of 2000 about 300000 national non formal education program centers were catering to the 7.42 million children about 120000 nfe centers were exclusively for the girls so a 1998 survey report by us department the chief barriers to female education in india are inadequate school facilities such as uh, sanitary facilities shortage of female teachers gender bias in the curriculum female characters are depicted as weak helpless literacy rate is lower for women as compared to that of women literacy rate is 60.6 for women while for men it is 81.36 the 2011 census however indicated a 2001 to 11 decadal literacy growth of 9.2% which is slower than the growth seen during the earlier stages so there is a wide gender disparity in the literacy rate in india now uh, contrary to common perception large percentage of women in india are actively engaged in traditional and non traditional work national data data collection agencies accept the statistics and seriously understate women's contribution as worker there are far fewer worker uh, women than men in the paid workforce in urban india women participate in workforce in impressive numbers and they are in software industry 30% of the workforce is women in rural india however in agriculture and allied industrial sectors women account for 89.5% of the workforce so in overall farm production women's average contribution is estimated at 55% to 66% of the total labor according to 1991 world bank report a women accounted for 94% of total employment in dairy production in india so women constitute 51% of the total employed in forest based small scale enterprises now gender pay gap 2017 a study of monster salary index showed that the overall gender pay gap in india was 20% also it was found that it was narrower in the early years of experience while men with 2 years of experience earned 7.8% higher median wages than women in the experience group of 6 to 10 years of experience the pay gap was 15.3% the pay gap becomes a wider at senior level position as men with 11 and more years of tenure earn 25% more median median wages than the women now educational background men with bachelor's degree earn more and uh, 16% higher than median wage than women in the year 2015 16 and 17 while masters degree holder experience even higher pay so men with a focus or 5 year degree or equivalent of a master degree have on average earned 33.7% higher median pay uh, wages than the women however we have passed the equal remuneration act way back in 1976 which prohibits discrimination in remuneration on the ground of sex but in practice there is the pay disparity which still 
is existing. Regarding entrepreneurship and business, the most famous female business success story is the story from the rural sector of Sri Mahila Graha Udyog, Lijit Papad, started in 1959 by seven women in Mumbai with a seed capital of only rupees 80. It has annual turnover of more than 800 crore. In 2018, it provides employment to 43,000 women and men 2018 women across the country. One of the largest dairy productive, which is a cooperative dairy productive, it is in Gujarat, in Anand, Amul, that is being mobilized by rural women in Anand, the western ghats of the Gujarat state. Now, 2006, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw was who who founded the Biocon is one of the India's first biotech company is rated as India's most richest women. Lalita D. Gupte and Kalpana Mori Rappa are hailed as the business women in India who made the list of Forbes world's most powerful women. Gupte ran ICICI Bank, India's second largest bank until October 2006 and Morapira is CEO of JP Morgan India. Shaw remained the richest self-made women in 2018, coming in at 72nd place in terms of net worth in Forbes annual rich list. Now, land and property rights, whether they belong to women, Inherently, if we speak, they do not belong to women. Women do harvest, women do work in the farms. They produce the grains, but yet they have any land which they own by themselves. So, uh, many times we see it is only women and men, uh, they work in agriculture industry. Indian families, women do not own any property in their own name and do not get a share in parental property due to weak enforcement of laws protecting their interest and uh, women having control or access to the land and property is very low. In India, women's property rights are depending, varying from region to region, religion, tribe and it is subject to a complex mix of law and custom. But in principle, the more has been towards granting equal right to women, especially since, since the passing of Hindu Succession Amendment Act of 2005. The Hindu Personal Law of 1956, applying to Hindu, Buddhist, Sikhs and Jain, gave women right to inheritance. However, sons have independent share in the ancestral property, while the daughter's shares were based on the share received by their father. Hence, a father could effectively disinherit his daughter by renouncing her share in the family property. Also, married daughters, even those who faced uh, domestic abuse, difficulties or harassments had no residential right in their ancestral home. So, the Hindu Amendment Act has been amended. That is the amendment in 2005. Now, women have the same status as men. In 1986, the Supreme Court of India ruled that Shah Banu, an elderly divorced Muslim woman, was eligible for alimony. However, the decision was opposed by various fundamental groups. They alleged that the court was interfering in their personal law. The Union government subsequently passed the Muslim Women's Protection of Right Upon Divorce Act. Similarly, Christian women have struggled over the years for equal right in divorce and succession. 
In 1994, all churches jointly with women organization drew up a draft law called Christian Marriage and Matrimonial Causes Bill. However, the government has not amended the relevant law. In 2014, the Law Commission of India has asked the government to modify the law to give Christian women equal property right. Let us look into crime against women. Crime rate data per 10,000 women it is exorbitant in nature, the rate of crime, that is the status quo in the year 2012. And violence against women, it includes rape, sexual assault, ins insult to modesty, kidnapping, abduction, cruelty by intimate partner, relative, trafficking, persecution for dowry, dowry debt, indecency, and other listed crimes under the Indian Penal Code. So, crime against women such as rape, acid attack, dowry killing, honor killing, and forced prostitution of young girl have been reported in India. And the Thomas Reuter Foundation uh, has stated that India as, is the fourth most dangerous place in the world for women to live based on the poll of 213 gender experts. So, the National Crime Record Bureau reported in 1998 that by 2010, growth in the rate of crime against women, it will exceed the population growth rate. Earlier, many crime against women were not reported because it attached stigma to the family and to the name of the victim. But uh, today, we see there is a dramatic increase in the number of matters which are reported that is crime against women. Acid attack, it is a heinous crime, heinous offence and uh, looking into the analysis of Indian news report, 72% of the cases reported from Jan 2002 to October 2010 included at least one female victim, sulfuric acid, nutric, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid and the most common type of acid used in attack is generally the cheap and widely available common cleaning supply. Acid attack against women often are done as a form of revenge or uh, it can be done by relative or a friend. The number of acid attacks have been rising in the recent year. Child marriage it is traditionally prevalent in India but it is not so continued in modern India. Child bride earlier they will live with their parent until they reach puberty. In the past, child widows were condemned to life of great agony, shaved head, living in isolation or had to perform sati. They were shunned by society. But child marriage is outlawed in 1960. But in some places still it is continued as a practice. And the Act to Restrain Child Marriage, it is the Child Marriage Restraint Act of 1929, a relevant legislation in this regard. regard. According to UNICEF's State of World's Children 2009 report, 47% of India's women aged 20 to 24 were married before the legal age of 18, rising to 56% in rural areas. Now, domestic violence in India, it is endemic. 70% of women in India are victim of domestic violence. And uh, this has been addressed by Renuka Choudhury, former Union Minister for Women and Child Development. Domestic violence is addressed in 1980. And in 1983, Criminal Law Act introduced Section 498A, husband or relative of a friend of a woman, subjecting her to cruelty. So, National Crime Record Bureau reveals that a crime against women is committed every three minutes. A woman minute a woman is raped. Every 29 minutes a dowry death occurs. Every 77 minutes and one case of cruelty is committed by either the husband or relative of the husband in every nine minutes. This occurs despite the fact that women in India are legally protected from domestic abuse under the protection of women from Domestic Violence Act. So, uh, domestic violence towards women is considered as a type of abuse that can be considered as a threat. 
it will be physical psychological sexual abuse by one of the partner to the other partner domestic violence is not handled as a crime or complaint it is seen more to be a private family matter but in determining the category of complaint it is based on caste class religion bias and race which also determines whether the action should be taken or it should not be taken so studies have also reported and suggested the prevalence of the violence and have taken as a criminal justice approach but women refuse to report these offenses these women are guaranteed guaranteed constitutional justice dignity equality but continue to refuse based on their socio cultural context so as the women refuse to speak of violence and find help they are also not receiving proper treatment the other evil issue that is of the dowry system in india the dowry debt so government of india in 1961 passed the dowry prohibition act making dowry demand in wedding arrangement illegal however however many cases of dowry related domestic violence suicide murder have been reported 1980 numerous such cases were reported 1985 the dowry prohibition maintenance of list of presents to the bride and bridegroom the rule was reframed and according to these rules a signed list should be maintained of present given at the time of marriage to the bride and the bridegroom the list should contain a brief description of each present its approximate value the name of which has been given to the present and relationship with the recipient but uh, many times these practices or these norms are not followed in 1997 a report claimed that each year 5000 women in india die because of dowry related death and at least a dozen of them die in kitchen fire thought to be intentional the term for this is bride burning and is criticized 2011 the national crime record bureau reported 8618 dowry death and unofficial estimates can be more high than this number next evil practices female feticide or missing women of asia and you may call it to be infanticide also and the male female sex ratio if we look into it has been deteriorated and the reason for deterioration of this sex ratio is only to have the male child and to abort for the female fetus now tribal societies in india they have a less skewed sex ratio than other group and uh, the technique that is which came to india that is the ultrasound technique or the uh, sonography which we may call it is for uh, mapping or for determining the genetic abnormalities of the fetus but people took to their advantage by compelling the doctors or the laboratories who conduct these tests making them tell that whether the fetus was female or male and this became dominant because of which many uh, uh, parents to be they started aborting the female fetuses and uh, ultrasound uh, though it is a system which is there which is for scanning and providing care for mother and baby with scanner but uh, it spread to the rural population and urban population and uh, this practice is considered to be the main reason for the change in sex ratio in 1994 the indian government has passed a law for forbidding women or their families from asking the sex of the baby after ultrasound sonography and uh, today we have the law that is uh, prenatal diagnostic uh, prevention and misuse law where uh, any clinic if it is going for ultrasonography and giving the reasons that is it is for uh, determining the sex of the child then this is punishable and uh, 
female infanticide or killing of infant girl it is still prevalent in certain rural area sometimes this infanticide is done intentionally sometimes it is by neglect and families do not want to spend money on critical medicines or take care of a sick girl child now honor killing you all are aware it is a practice which is there prevalent in many of the states in india especially punjab rajasthan haryana uttar pradesh maharashtra as a result of the girl marrying without the family's acceptance and sometimes for marrying outside her caste or religion and uh, honor killings are notorious incidents have taken place in the uh, state of haryana and the decisions given by the khap panchayat and uh, in some parts of india west bengal honor killing completely ceased about a century ago century ago but this is because of the influence of the reformists that is ramakrishna paramahans vidyasagar and raja ram mohan roy in 2010 the supreme court of india has issued notice in regard to honor killing to the state of punjab haryana bihar uttar pradesh rajasthan jharkhand himachal pradesh and madhya pradesh and uh, regarding female infanticide the government has come up with various schemes for protecting the girl that is beti beti bachao beti padhao andolan or largely so that the girl child once she is born the government will also take interest to protect the interest of the girl child and uh, yeah witchcraft where uh, women are considered to be witches and they are burnt alive this kind of violence has been seen against uh, single women and uh, it has occurred in the parts of northern india when women are killed they are lynched to death in assam in west bengal between 2003 and 2008 there were around 750 death related to accusation of witchcraft officials in the state of chatisgarh reported in 2008 that at least 100 women were maltreated annually and treated as suspected witches now uh, people in delhi india have protested after the young student who was gang raped in delhi and we have the criminal amendment act rape in india is described by radha kumar as one of the india's most heinous crime against women and by the united nations high human rights chief as national problem since 1980 women's rights groups have lobbied for marital rape to be declared unlawful but criminal law amendment act of 2013 still maintains that the marital exemption by stating in exception clause of section 375 that sexual intercourse or sexual act by a man with his wife the wife not being under the age uh, under uh, 15 years of age is not rape while per capita reported incidents are quite low compared to other countries even developed countries a new case is reported in every 20 minutes new delhi is one of the highest rate of rape report amongst indian cities the sources also show that rape cases in india have doubled between 1990 and 200 then the next uh, offense is of eve teasing stalking and uh, molestation of women by men and these are rising the indecent representation of women prohibition act it has been passed to prohibit the indecent representation of women through advertisement in publication in writing in painting or in another any other manner of the total number of crime against women reported in 1990 half related to molestation and harassment in workplace 1997 in a landmark judgment the supreme court of india has taken a strong stand against uh, sexual harassment of women at workplace and this includes uh, women at workplace women working in the uh, sector that is the uh, where it is regulated by the government and unregulated sector also so the court has laid down detailed guidelines for prevention and redressal grievances 
the national commission of women subsequently elaborated these guidelines into a code of conduct for employees in 2013 the top courts investigated on law graduates allegation that she was sexually harassed by a, a retired supreme court judge the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act came into force in december 2013 to prevent harassment of women at workplace now the immoral traffic prevention act it has been passed in 1956 many cases of trafficking of young girls are reported many go unreported also uh, the enactments which have to be looked into and studied for the women safety law they are guardians and ward uh, ward act of 1890 indian penal code of 1860 Christian Marriage Act of 1872 Indian Evidence Act of 1872 Married Women Property Act of 1874 Workmen Compensation Act of 1923 Indian Succession Act of 1925 Immoral uh, Traffic Prevention Act of 1956 Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961 Cinematograph of 1952 Commission of Sati Prevention Act of 1987 Child Marriage Restraint Act Muslim Personal Law Shariat Application of 1937 Indecent Re- uh, Representation of Women Prevention Act 1986 Special Marriage Act of 1954 Hindu Marriage Act of 1955 Family Court Act of 1984 Maternity Benefit Act of 1961 Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act of 1956 Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1971 National Commission for Women Act of 1990 The Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Prohibition of Sex Selection Act of 1994 Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act of 2005 Sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act of 2013 Indian divorce act of 1969 equal remuneration act of 1976 Hindu widow remarriage act of 1856 Muslim women protection of right on divorce act 18 1986 uh in the uh, sector of education Uh, Indian women we have seen they were disadvantaged in comparison to men in the matters relating to literacy and uh, contributing to the large number of drop uh, dropout gender bias in adequate facilities and uh, we also have to look into the issues which are faced by the uh, disabled so over here the example is of deaf women they face unique challenges in education and uh, they face oppression and uh, as a deaf person now covid 19 during this period there were number of challenges by these uh, deaf women they faced not only because they were facing gender bias but also they had a special need which had to be met with and India had to struggle when it came to the accessibility of education during the time of pandemic women and girl who have disability including deafness face more difficulties and more of sexual violence and uh, it is because of their situation it is difficult uh, for them to cry for help and uh, they become soft and easy targets and are victimized reporting of these violence is very low due to lack of access to adequate communication accommodations like interpreter are rarely available in these scenes even though the indian government has intended to upkeep and enforce laws regarding sexual violence specifically mentioning women with disabilities following civic unrest about young women's rape in 2013 these laws are not able to are not executed efficiently 
guidelines and protocols for medico legal care for victims survivors of sexual violence have been issued by indian ministries of health and family welfare but uh, and they have opined that the reasons disabled women often have difficulty in reporting the violence so deaf women when we are looking into uh, there are lack of interpreters fear of stigma and more and however on top there is the justice system which does not respond well there is no uh, specific organization or standardized sign language in india so there has much emphasis on kinship amongst uh, deaf women uh, there is the delhi foundation of deaf women which has been started to have certain space for career opportunities to experience community social skill for these women and identifying the requirements of these women we have the all india foundation deaf women which began by filling the need of community as a club for deaf uh, women but recognize that deaf women need more structured support and from 1973 there have been expanded into rehabilitation center and for deaf women and deaf uh, individuals and a number of programs are also organized for them that is cultural and uh, participatory events uh, career opportunities they are very little for them and uh, during the covid period it was very difficult for them to be educated because uh, first of all it is difficult to hear and secondly with the mask and the lip movement so dependency situations are more when it comes to people with disability then participation of women in social life it is very little in the sense in the other uh, northern regions due to family status uh, the practice of gungat honor which is the family's pride it is still being uh, practiced not only in the state of rajasthan but also in the regions of uh, uttar pradesh haryana and in 2018 the supreme court of india has lifted a dk old decade old ban prohibiting women between the ages of 10 and 15 from entering sabri mala temple in kerala uh, 2019 two women attempted to enter into the temple but uh, they had to be uh, staying for a long duration under the police uh, protection and uh, in uh, 2018 when women were forbidden to climb agatsya vardukam varkudam uh, mountain the court ruling was given by the supreme court entitling uh, these women to climb and removing the prohibition now let us come to health the average female life expectancy today in india it is low compared to many countries it shows gradual improvement over the year many families especially rural ones girls and women face nutritional discrimination with a family this is called as a uh, dwarfism they are anemic they are malnutrition in addition poor nutrition during pregnancy often leads to childbirth uh, complications but again over here the government has made provision where uh, the pregnant women will be receiving to the extent of rupees 6000 so that she can take care of herself and her child maternal mort- mortality in india it is 56th uh, highest in the world 42% of birth in the country are supervised in medical institution in rural area most of women deliver with the help of women and family contradictory to the fact that unprofessional or unskilled deliverer lacks the knowledge about pregnancy family prayer planning in india average women living in rural india has little or no control over becoming pregnant women particularly in rural area do not have access to safe controlled methods of contraception public health system emphasizes permanent methods like sterilization long term methods like uh, iud's that you know they do not leave, uh, have to have a follow up 
sterilization accounts for more than 75% of total contraception with female sterilization accounting for almost 95% of sterilization. The contraceptive prevalence rate for 2007-8 was estimated at 54.86%. However, the lower caste women in India have significant improvement in their status. They are educated, family financially well, of Dalit women use politics to achieve their status. And many Dalit women who were involved in politics later declined due to increasing income and educational level. Status of Dalit women with household is also need to be improved. So this case I have already explained it to you that is the sex uh, ratio and um, the gap between the two gender it titles it is a different response the gender bias uh, male education and health are a priority in comparison to women health uh, then sanitation in india in rural areas schools have been reported to have gained uh, today improved sanitation facility Given the existing socio-cultural norm and situation of sanitation, girl students are forced not to relieve themselves in the open, like boy. Lack of facilities in home forces women to wait for night to relieve themselves and avoid that is to be seen by others. Access to sanitation in Bihar has been discussed. According to estimate, from 2013, about 85% of rural household in Bihar had no access to toilet and this creates a dangerous situation for women and girls who are followed, attacked and raped in the field. In 2011, Right to Pee, a media campaign began in Mumbai, India's largest city. Women but not men have to pay to urinate in Mumbai despite regulations against this practice. Women also are sexually assaulted while urinating in the field. So activists collected more than 50,000 signatures supporting their demand that the local government stop charging women to urinate, build more toilet, keep them clean, provide sanitary napkins and a trash can, and hire female attendants. In response, city officials have agreed to build 100 of public toilet for women in Mumbai, and some local legislators are now promising to build toilets for women in every one of their districts. Now, the welfare schemes for the women which have to be looked into, they are the welfare scheme for women in India, women in Indian armed forces, gender equality in India, which you must read, women's suffrage in India, menstrual taboo, rape in India, social issues in India, women in agriculture in India, women rights in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, women Hinduism, women Sikhism, uh, women... Uh, Reservation Bill, a National Commission for Women, Ministry of Women and Child Development, Central for Equality and Inclusion, and Women's Right, they are the human rights. Okay. So 2020, it is a year of precarity, devastating losses, looming disappear. This year has not only excavated our existing vulnerabilities, but added more into it and thus caused a lot of eternal fragility of humanity. So in a country where justice is con considered anyway elusive, COVID-19 has posed an arduous challenge to the judiciary to keep the ball rolling. However, it is not all gloom. Our judiciary, despite working in limited capacity, has given us land landmark rulings to cheer these rulings have gradually but certainly chipped away anti devolution and absurd norms that have long safeguard the tenets of patriarchy and kept women on the hem. Now there are certain rulings that have paved the move for the executive and the legislature to keep and set up and uphold the interest of women in the country. 
Now, there are certain significant judgments which have been rendered by the Supreme Court. First is equal right of daughters in co-parsonary property, which has been decided in Vinita Sharma versus Rakesh Sharma 2020. The Supreme Court has held that daughters have equal co-parsonary rights in Hindu undivided family property. The court also held that this right arises by taking birth. So when a daughter is born, she also steps into the co-parsonary as that of a son. However, a daughter born before the uh, before a daughter born before can also claim these rights only with effect from transactions as provided in the proviso to section 6 1 read with section 65 further the court has clarified that since the rights in co parsonary is by birth father co parsonary does not need to be living on 9 to 2005 now the glass ceiling has been broken in this particular case that is the case of secretary ministry of defense versus babita punia and others and uh, the court said that all women of army officers are eligible to be appointed in commanding role and entitled to permission uh, permanent commission the court also stated that uh, the submissions which have been made by the ministry of defense they are gender biased they are sex stereotype and uh, perm, uh, perm pre premised on assumptions of socially ascribed role of gender which discriminate against women so there is a greater challenge for women officers to meet the hazards of service owing to their prolonged absence during pregnancy, motherhood, domestic obligations towards their children and family. The court held that such notions are flawed and are in clear violation of Article 14 of the Constitution of India. So this judgment shall always be celebrated which paved the way for general equality in defense services now reproductive choice of a woman it is also a fundamental right so state of rajasthan versus s a minor girl was sexually assaulted where she unfortunately became pregnant she made a petition seeking permission for termination of pregnancy the medical board was of the opinion that there was no serious threat to the mother if the pregnancy is terminated however the single judge bench of high court held that the fetus in the womb has the right to life as enshrined under article 21 of constitution but what matter was appealed to the division bench the bench set aside the impunct judgment and held there is no doubt that the women's right to make a reproductive choice is also the dimension of personal liberty but when understood under article 1 of the 21 of the constitution it is important to recognize that reproductive choices can't be exercised to procreate as well as can be exercised sorry to procreate as well as to abstain from procreating the crucial consideration over here is that the women's right to privacy, dignity, bodily integrity which should be respected. This means that there should be no restriction whatsoever on the exercise of reproductive choice such as women's right to refuse participation in sexual activity or alternatively the insistence on the use of contraceptive methods so the two finger test it violates the victim's right to privacy dignity integrity and gujarat high court while deciding this matter in state of gujarat versus ramesh chandra ramabhai panchal the court observed that the two finger test conducted during the course of medical exam is unconstitutional and uh, 
Uh, the court also stated that the two finger test in which the doctor puts fingers inside the woman's vagina to examine whether the victim was sexually active or not is one of the most unscientific and intrusive method of physical examination. Therefore, the court held whether the survivor is habituated to sexual intercourse before the assault or has absolutely no bearing on whether she consented when the rape, when her, uh, contended, consented when the rape occurred. So, section 155 of Indian Evidence Act does not allow a rape victim's credibility to be compromised on the ground that she is of generally immoral character. So, the two finger test is unconstitutional, violating the dignity of the victim to privacy, physical and mental integrity and dignity. Now, uh, Sexual Harassment at Workplace. In Punjab and Sindh Bank and others versus uh, Durgesh Kuvar, the Apex Court, while rescinding a transfer order of a women bank employee who had alleged sexual harassment by a senior colleague held, Sexual harassment at workplace violates women's fundamental right to equality, their right to live with dignity and to practice any profession. Now over here, uh, matter of Bhuvneshwari versus Puranik, the deceased government employee had a son and a daughter. The son denied the appointment and claim made by the daughter on the grounds that she was married. However, the Karnataka High Court ruled that such rule which creates division based on gender by permitting a married son but denying a married daughter is discriminatory and unconstitutional. The court held that marriage does not determine the continuance of relationship of a child with the parent, whether a son or a daughter. Son continues to be a son both before the marriage and a daughter also should continue to be a daughter before and after marriage. The relationship does not be does not get affected because of the marriage. Now, in this matter, the court has upheld that prostitution is not an offense. That is the matter of Kajal Mukesh versus State of Maharashtra. The Bombay High Court has held prostitution is not offense under Immoral Traffic Prevention Act of 1956. As per the act, what is punishable is the sexual exploitation or abuse of a person for commercial purpose. And the court also held that adult woman has the right to choose her vocation, her profession, while setting free three sex workers who were detained from a women's hostel in Uttar Pradesh. Now, regarding transgender person, that is Hina Hanifa versus Union of India, a trans woman challenged Section 6 of the National Credit Corps Act, which considers only male and females to be eligible for enrollment. The Kerala High Court observed that this is discriminatory and against the state's transgender policy and also stated that a person cannot be denied a legitimate right only because he or she is a transgender person. The court has asked the NCC unit of the University of College in Tiruvanantapuram to keep the seat vacant until the matter is finally disposed of. In current uh, uh, matter, that is Karan Tripathi versus NCRB versus other, the central government informed Delhi High Court that trans people will now be included as a separate gender category in the prison statistics report prepared by NCRB. In recent matter, the Delhi High Court, while hearing a petition filed by a 26-year-old woman accusing her parents of forcing her to get married against her will, held that the women cannot be pressurized to get married against her choice. If she wishes to stay away from her family, then police or her parents cannot force her against her choice. So, in uh, 
recent uh, decisions the supreme court has ordered that women can also sit for national defense academy examination over the years the apex court of india has time and again championed women's right and these are the series of decisions which we have looked into where uh, women's issues have been discussed and uh, resolved by the apex court now in august last year the apex court also ruled that the daughters will have equal right to ancestral property irrespective whether their fathers were alive or not prior to or on september 9 2005 which is when the amendment came into existence this judgment has came has come in the case of vanita sharma versus rakesh sharma before the 2000 amendment only sons were eligible to claim their share in the hindu undivided family property as a matter of right however a daughter did not have any right post marriage as she was taken as a part of her husband's uh, family 1997 the case that is vishaka versus uh, state of rajasthan we have the act which is coming into uh, being which has been legislated and it is called as the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition redressal act of 2013 the apex court in 2017 in shaira banu versus union of india case has held that the practice of triple talaq whereby a muslim man can divorce his wife by uttering talaq thrice was not a part of quran the court said that this practice talaq behad bidah was against the basic tenets of islam and quran and thereby banned it now this case we have already discussed that is ministry of defense versus babita punia which uh, which allows women to be equal with their male colleagues in terms of promotion pension and more uh, the court also slammed the indian army on august 18 for disallowing women to appear in national defense academy it allowed women candidate to take the examination and said army's policy for women was based on gender uh, discrimination in lata singh versus state of uttar pradesh 2006 the supreme court has held live in relationship to be legal by referring article 21 right to life personal liberty of the constitution the apex court declared that for a man and women to live together it is a part of their right to life and it does not amount to criminal offense even though it is viewed as viewed as immoral by the section of uh, society in buddha dev karmaskar versus state of bengal in 2011 the supreme court has stood for the right of sex worker holding they also have the right to live with dignity under article 21 of constitution of india it directed the central government and state government through social welfare board they should prepare schemes for rehabilitation all over the country for physically and sexually abused women in lakshmi versus union of india 2004 in this pil brought about by lakshmi an acid attack survivor the supreme court has issued guideline for welfare of acid attack survivor besides imposing a country wide restriction on the sale of acid and compensation to the victim the judgment led to an amendment in criminal law making acid attack a specific offense and framing of a victim compensation scheme for survivor <laughs> in abc versus nct of delhi 2015 the supreme court has ruled that an unwed mother can be appointed as a sole legal guardian of a child without the consent of the father the court held that it is not required of the mother to disclose the identity of the father and include him as a party to the guardianship petition in this matter in joseph shain versus union of india 2018 decriminalizing adultery a five bench a five judge bench read down section 497 of ipc claiming it to be vestige of victorian era 
the bench declared the law to be unconstitutional at, as it was antithetical to liberty dignity and equality the court held women cannot be treated as chattels of their husband the act of adultery thus remains a civil wrong and not a criminal wrong now in a versus b 2020 the progress of any society depends on its ability to protect and pr promote the right of women the supreme court has said that while ruling that a woman is entitled to claim right to the residence in a shared household where she has been living with her husband even if the said premises belongs to the relative now whatever we discussed we have looked from the indian polity or indian perspective how the legislations have come over for protecting the interest of women and the transformation which has taken from centuries further we have also seen that these legislations are there in information technology act also where the interest of women and child are protecting that is from pornography from stalking or from harassment at uh, the uh, internet now uh, regarding the global scenario if we are going to look into employment right for women include non discriminatory access of women to job and equal pay but this right was not granted to them as its own they had to fight for this right and right of women and men to have equal pay equal benefit for equal work it was openly denied by british hong kong administration in the 1970s so leslie wa liu chung president of hong kong chinese civil servants association contributed to the establishment of equal pay for men and women including the right for married women to be a permanent employee before this the job status of women changed from permanent employee to temporary employee once she was married thus losing her job her pension benefit and her salary benefit also uh, however when we look into this discussion earlier nurses were the most uh, only women and their right had to be improved and many times they lost their right because they were married women but in many european countries married women could not work without the consent of their husband until few decades ago for example in france till 1965 spain 1975 in addition marriage bar a practice adopted from late 19th century to the 1970s across many countries including austria australia ireland canada switzerland they restricted married women from employment in many profession a key issue over here <coughs> regarding gender equality in workplace is respecting maternity maternity rights reproductive rights of women maternity leave paternity leave in some countries parental leave and temporary period of absence from employment granted immediately before and after childbirth in order to support the mother and child and full recovery of mother that is the postnatal care of the mother and also of the baby uh, including if the women want to work from home or even if the women are carrying the baby to the workplace then there have to be the uh, facilities of crush where the baby can be taken care of when the mother works different countries have different rules regarding maternity leave paternity leave and in india today uh, women have a maternity leave of 6 months in paid uh, in uh, government uh, offices in european union uh, no, uh, union the uh, policies vary significantly that is country to country but eu members must abide by the minimum standards of the pregnant workers directive and parental leave directives now it is the strategist and activist alice paul guided and ran for the suffrage movement in usa in 1910s and uh, there has been opposition to this movement also where some uh, women claim that rather than getting the right to vote women should get the right for 
working and equal pay uh, during the work um, and uh, right that is their work is to be protected but lately we have the ideals of women's suffrage developed alongside the universal suffrage and today women's suffrage is there considered as a right under the convention on the elimination of all form of discrimination against women during the 19th century the right to vote was gradually extended in many countries and women started to campaign for their right to vote in 1893 new zealand became the first country to give in, give women the right to vote on a national level australia gave women the right to vote in 1902 number of nordic countries gave women right to vote in the early 20th century that is finland norway denmark iceland and with the end of the first world war many other countries have followed that is the netherland australia azerbaijan canada czech slovakia georgia poland sweden etc later the countries in europe which have adopted this are greece switzerland portugal saint mario monaco and andorra richardson in canada most provinces have enacted women's suffrage between 1917 and 1919 latin america some countries gave women right to vote in first half of 20th century and in ecuador brazil 1932 1939 Dominic Republic 1942 Guatemala 1956 Argentina 1946 In India under the colonial rule universal suffrage was granted in 1935 Regarding property rights globally if we are looking into 19th century some women such as Ernestine Rose Pauline Bright Davis Elizabeth Cady Santon uh they challenged the laws which were existing which denied them the right to property once they were married under the common law the doctrine of coviter husbands gained control over their wives real estate and wages but in the 1840s state legislatures in us and british parliament began passing statute that protected women's property from their husband and their husband's creditors these laws were known as the married women's property act court in 19th century in us also continued to require privy examination of married women who were interested in selling their property a privy examination is a practice in which a married woman who wish to sell her property is to be examined by the judge or justice of peace outside the presence of her husband and was inquired into inquired into whether she really wanted to sell the property and there was no pressure from her husband to sign the document property right for women continued to be restricted in european countries until legal reforms have been introduced in 60s and 70s for example in west germany the law pertaining to rural farm succession favored male heir until 1963 in us the head and master law which gave sole control of marital property to the husband were common until a few decade ago the supreme court over there in kitchburg versus finstra 1981 declared these laws unconstitutional now freedom of movement we all know it is a fundamental right and it is enshrined in the indian constitution uh, it is recognized through international instruments also including article 154 of sedo but in many regions of the world women have this right severely restricted in law or in practice for instance instances in some countries women may not leave the home without a male guardian or without the consent of husband for example the personal law of yemen states that the wife must obey her husband and must not get out of her home without the consent 
even in certain countries which do not have legal restrictions women's movement is pr uh, prevented in practice either by social religious norms or the parda restrictions or because it is not safe for them to move or to travel out in western countries until 1983 in australia the passport application of a married woman had to be authorized by her husband several middle eastern countries follow the male guardian system in the modern era where women are required to take permission from male family member for several things including traveling to other countries in august 2019 saudi arabia has ended this male guardianship law allowing women to travel by themselves various practices have been used historically to restrict women's freedom of movement such as foot binding the custom of applying painfully tight binding to the feet of young chinese girls which was very common between the 10th and 20th century women's freedom of movement may be restricted by law but it may also be restricted by attitude towards women in public spaces in areas where it is not accepted socially for women to leave the home women who are outside can face abuse insult sexual harassment violence many of these restriction on women freedom of movement are framed as measures to protect the women and uh, there is lack of legal knowledge amongst women especially in the de um, uh, developing countries it is a major obstacle in the improvement of uh, women's situation the international bodies such as un have stated that the obligation of state does not only consist in passing relevant law but also informing women about the existence of such law in order to enable them to seek justice and realize in practice their right therefore state must popularize the law explain them clearly to the public in order to prevent ignorance or misconceptions originating in popular myth about the law the un development program states that in order to advance gender justice women must know their right and they should be enabled to have access to legal system and 1993 united nations declaration on elimination of women against uh, elimination of violence against women states at article 4d states should also inform women of their right in seeking redressal through such mechanisms so women's right movement focusing on ending discrimination of women it is uh, throughout the world and definition of discrimination is very very important to understand and this is in the european uh, ECHR that is the rights which have been mentioned in the European Commission on Human Rights the right to freedom from discrimination includes not only the obligation of state to treat in the same way persons who are in analogous situation but also the obligation to treat in a different way persons who are in different situation in this record in this regard equity does not just equality is important therefore state must sometime differentiate between women and men through for example offering maternity leave other legal protection surrounding pregnancy childbirth to take into account the biological realities of reproduction and acknowledging a specific historical context act of violence committed by men against women do not happen in vacuum but are a part of social context in opus versus turkey the echr defined violence against women a form of discrimination against women this is also the position of istanbul convention which at article 3 states violence against women is understood as a violence of human right and a form of discrimination against women so there are different views where it it is appropriate to differentiate between women and men and one view is that of the act
act of sexual intercourse is an act where the differences must be acknowledged both to the both due to increased physical risk for the women and due to the historical context of women being systematically subjected to force sexual intercourse in socially subordinated position particularly within the marriage and also during the war the state must differentiate with regard to healthcare as a priority by ensuring women's health as a priority particularly regarding reproductive health pregnancy and childbirth so according to who discrimination in healthcare settings takes in different forms and it is manifested when individual or group is denied access to healthcare services that are otherwise available to others it can also occur through denial of services that are only needed by certain group of people or women so uh, the refusal of state to acknowledge the specific need of women such as necessity of policies and there has to be strong investment of state in reducing maternal mortality and it is a form of discrimination so in this regard women and men similarly does not work because of certain biological aspects such as menstruation pregnancy labor childbirth breastfeeding so the committee on elimination of discrimination against women stipulates in its general recommendation number 35 on gender based uh, violence against women updating general recommendation number 19 that states should examine gender neutral law and policies to ensure that they do so another example of general neutral policy which harms women is that where medication tested in medical trial only on men is also used on women assuming that there are no biological differences so health by who is defined as a state of complete mental and social well being and not merely the absence of a disease or infirmity infirmity women's health refers to health of women which differs from that of men in unique way so women's health is severely impaired in some parts of the world due to various factors of inequality confinement of women to their home indifference of medical uh, worker lack of autonomy to women lack of finan financial resources which the women may require discrimination against women occur also through denial of medical services that are needed by women violation of women's right to health may result in maternal death accounting for more than 300000 death per year most of them in developing country certain traditional practices such as female genital mutilation also affect women health worldwide young women and adolescent girls face the challenges that are spread over to them by hiv aids so right to education it is universal entitlement of education the convention against discrimination in education prohibits discrimination in education with discrimination being defined as distinction exclusion limitation or preference which being based on race color sex language religion political or other opinion national or social origin the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights states that article 3 that the state parties to the present covenant should undertake to ensure the equal right of men and women to enjoyment of all economic social and cultural rights which are there in the covenant while article 13 recognizes the right to everybody's education access to education for women in, in remains limited in many parts of the world almost two third of the world's illiterate adults are women while women's right to access to academic education is recognized very important it is increasingly recognized that academic education must be supplemented with education on human right non discrimination ethics 
gender equality in order for social advancement to be made possible and this has been pointed by zaid rad al hussein the director of united nations high commissioner for human right who has stressed the importance of human rights education for all children now certain legal rights they are also to be understood the nature of reproductive rights they are legal freedom relating to reproduction reproductive health reproductive rights are endorsed by 20 year cairo program of action which is adopted in 1994 at international conference on population and development in cairo and beijing declaration and beijing platform for action in 1995 In 1870s feminists have advanced the concept of voluntary motherhood as a politic critique of involuntary motherhood expressing a desire for women's emancipation advocates for voluntary motherhood disapproved of contraception arguing that women should only engage in sex for the purpose of procreation and advocated for periodic or permanent abstinence reproductive right represent the broader concept that includes some or all of the following right that is the right to legal safe abortion right to control one's own reproductive function right to have access to quality reproductive health care and the right to education access in order to make reproductive choices free from coercion discrimination and violence uh reproductive rights may also be understood to include education so reproductive rights represent a broader concept which i have already explained and it is the right to access quality reproductive health care right to education right and access in order to make reproductive choices free from coercion discrimination and violence reproductive rights may also be understood to include education about contraception sexually transmitted infection rights are often defined to include freedom from female genital mutilation forced abortion forced sterilization the istanbul convention recognizes these two rights at article 38 female genital mutilation and article 39 forced abortion and forced sterilization so reproductive rights are understood as rights of both men and women but are most frequently advanced as women right in 1960s reproductive right activists promoted women right to bodily autonomy with the social movement leading to the gain of legal access to contraception and abortion during the next decade in many country so uh, this author is very very important to be remembered and she is the pioneer and champion of this particular movement and it is the 1919 the birth control uh, control review published by margaret sanger in relation to how shall we change the law she wrote women appeal in vain for instruction concerning contraceptives physicians are willing to perform abortions while they are pronounced necessary but they refuse to direct to use preventives or precautions which could make abortions unnecessary i can't do it the law does permit it so in 20th century birth control has been advanced as alternative to the then fashionable terms family limitation and voluntary motherhood and the birth the for the phrase birth control entered the english language in 1914 and was popularized by margaret sanger who was mainly active in the us but gained an international reputation by 1913 the british birth control campaigner 
Mary Stopes made contraception acceptable in Britain during the 1920s by framing it as a scientific term. Stopes assisted emerging birth control movement in number of British colonies and the birth control movement advocated for contraception so to permit sexual intercourse as desired without the risk of uh, without the risk of pregnancy so uh, many things have been discussed today students and the committee on elimination of discrimination against women considers criminalization of abortion as violation of women's sexual and reproductive health and rights but there are uh, uh, many many organizations groups who who feels whether abortion is uh, a sin whether it should be allowed it should not be allowed and it is against uh, religion so many times women uh, go through humiliating uh, situations where the catholic church christian faith orthodox jew they do not allow for abortion so abuse during childbirth should also be prevented and uh, it is a global problem it is basic violation of women's right abuse during childbirth it is a neglect physical abuse lack of respect during the childbirth the treatment is regarded as violation of women's right and it also has to have the effect of preventing women from seeking prenatal care and using the other health services so other things which you must understand and read that is forced uh, pregnancy freedom from violence and uh, there is a declaration that is un declaration on the elimination of violence against women the council of europe convention on preventing and combating violence against women and specifically domestic violence also known as the istanbul convention provides following definition of violence against women and gender based violence have to be neutralized family law male dominated family we have seen and we have also tried to read into this and practices such as dowry bride price bride service were there but uh, today they are being disregarded some countries to continue to require male guardian for women even this is being uh, disregarded today and um, there is international council for women the first women organization to work across national boundaries for the common cause of advocating human right for women and uk a public ground shell is there and in us there is national organization for women created in 1996 for the purpose of bringing about equality for all women it is one of the most important group that has fought for equal right amendment and states that equal right under the law shall not be denied or abridged by us state or any state on the accounts of sex then we have women for women international non profit humanitarian organization providing practical and moral support to the women survivor of war wfwi helps women to rebuild their life after war devastation through a year long tired program that begins with direct financial aid and emotional counseling including life skill that is literacy numeracy training if necessary rights awareness education health education job skill training and small business development Uh, then we have the national council of women in canada association for protection and defense of women rights bill in saudi arabia and ukraine you have the femen which is founded in 2008 and in 1946 the united nation has established a commission on the status of women and 2010 united nation has founded by merging the division for advancement of women international research and training institute for advancement of women office of special advisor on gender issues advancement of women united nation development fund for women by general assembly so there are international women right equal means equal the united nations have come with horrifying statistics that is victim of female uh, genital mutilation 
and uh, 2019 the world bank has found that women have full legal right to men only in six countries then you have iida women development organization somali non governmental organization all pakistan women's association or civil society organization formed in 19 uh, 1949 and finally we have the universal declaration of human right adopted in 1948 enshrining the equal right of men and women and addressed both the equal equality and equity issues 1979 the un general assembly has adopted the convention on elimination of all form of discrimination against women cedaw for legal implementation of declaration of elimination of discrimination against women and this is international bill of rights for women which has come into force on 3rd september 1981 so convention defines discrimination and uh, deals with various rights relating to marriage divorce and family law so thank you and